Today, we're talking about lung tumors in dogs. I'm gonna give you five things that I want you to know about lung tumors in dogs. What's today's tumor topic? Well, today's topic is a little bit personal. We're talking about lung tumors. It's not my dog who was diagnosed, but it is one of my very good friends and colleagues. And her own personal dog, Mabel, was just diagnosed with a primary lung tumor. And she said to me, you don't have a video about lung tumors. And you know at the end of each video where I say, hey, if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, let me know. Well, this one is for Mabel and let's break it down. Number one, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in people, but it's actually very uncommon for dogs and cats to have primary lung cancer, and estimated to be the cause of about less than 1% of the reason that dogs and cats die. So primary lung cancer in dogs and cats is very uncommon, and what's actually way more common in dogs and cats, but we're gonna focus on dogs for this video, is metastatic cancer, cancer that spreads to the lungs. But we're gonna be focusing on primary lung cancer in this video. I will be doing another follow-up video on metastatic cancer because we approach that very differently. We approach that with chemotherapy. The treatment of choice, spoiler alert for this, is going to be surgery if there's been no spread. So again, Pretty uncommon for dogs and cats to have primary lung cancer. Who do we tend to see it in? Tends to be a cancer of middle age and older dogs, usually dogs about 11 years of age. The overrepresented breeds include boxers, Doberman pinchers, Irish setters, and Bernese mountain dogs. So how do we find lung cancer? So in some cases, your dog may be symptomatic, so showing us symptoms, but it's not uncommon for us to find this as part of your pet's routine geriatric screen. So when your veterinarian says, I'd like to do routine chest x-rays, this is exactly the reason that we recommend those chest x-rays. Me personally, my recommendation is that your dog and cat get chest x-rays and an ultrasound, but for lung cancer, for lung nodules, get chest x-rays twice a year. And people say, that sounds really frequently. Remember, our pets age more quickly. So that'd be like me or you getting you know, chest x-rays every couple of years. And the reason it's so important for things like lung cancer is we often find these before our pets are symptomatic. And as I'll tell you at the end of this video, dogs have a better prognosis if they're not symptomatic, they're not showing clinical signs. So again, it's really a good idea to do those chest x-rays, in my humble opinion, twice a year, and I usually start them at middle age. Middle age changes depending on the size of your dog. So if you have a Great Dane, middle age is gonna be a lot earlier than if you have a Chihuahua or you know a Maltese or something like that or a Labrador. So, you know, talk to your vet and say, when is middle age? When should we start doing these routine imaging, chest x-rays and ultrasound? But what are the, the clinical signs or that's what veterinarians call it. What are the symptoms that you may see? The most common one that we see in about 50 to 90% of dogs is going to be cough. Labored breathing we see in about, depending on the study, about five to 25% of cases. Your dog may be tired in about 10 to 15% of cases. Their appetite can be off. And so again, it could just be changes in appetite. I have a whole other video about that. And I think often it's really confusing because they may not eat their regular food, but they'll eat other food for you. And we get confused as to whether or not that's normal or not, and whether or not they should go into the veterinarian. So changes in appetite in about 10 to 15% of cases. Um, weight loss in about 10% of cases, coughing blood, and that's usually one that you know gets us worried or gets the pet owner worried in reported about three to 9% of cases. And then rarely we'll see lameness, and that's because this cancer can cause something called hypertrophic osteopathy, and so we can see lameness as well. So again, the most common thing that we're gonna see is coughing and labored breathing, and those would definitely be reasons to go to the, your veterinarian and get an x-ray. But my take home message for you guys is that we don't always see clinical signs and routine physical exams where you're going in, getting those chest x-rays a couple times a year, getting your pets you know, weight monitored are gonna be really good ways to hopefully detect these earlier. 
So number three is what test. And you know, your veterinarian is gonna recommend blood work and your analysis. That's always an important test just for overall health screening, see what else is going on, make sure they're not anemic. Sometimes they have secondary, you know, high white blood cells from infections, but chest x-rays are gonna be really important to, you know, make the diagnosis. And that's usually the first test that your primary care veterinarian will do. In one study, it's been shown that symptoms are often not seen until the uh, nodule is about three centimeters. So that's really important. Again, one of the reasons why doing those routine chest x-rays are gonna help detect these earlier. So let me show you what three centimeters is. All right, so I have you know a couple of calipers that we always, that you may have seen in some of other videos where we're talking about skin lumps and bumps because I always recommend doing your monthly lump and bump exam. So this is three centimeters, which is usually about the um, the frames on my, the height of my glasses. So that's a good estimate. So, you know, that's usually the size of a lung nodule before a dog will start to show clinical signs or symptoms that we talked about. So that is important why, again, we wanna take those x-rays early. Some other tests that your veterinarian or cancer specialist may talk to you about are ultrasound guided aspirates of the mass to collect some cells or a biopsy. I don't think they're always necessary in every case, so I'm gonna leave those you know, details to be discussed with your veterinary oncologist and we'll have links below on where you can find that or this discussion may be something that you're talking about with a surgeon if you're you know, meeting them before surgery. One test that I do want to definitely bring up is a thoracic CT scan because those are going to be more accurate for a couple of really important things and usually it means that you're going to have to go to a specialty center to get that CT scan. And so that's that three-dimensional picture and why that's really helpful is it's going to be better to detect spread to the lymph nodes within the chest cavity and also whether or not that, that first lung mass has spread to other nodules in the lungs and why that's really important because if that first lung cancer has spread throughout the lungs, you're not gonna wanna go to surgery. So it really changes what we're gonna do. So I definitely recommend that a dog that has a solitary lung nodule detected on chest x-rays have a CT scan before going to surgery. I think that's a really important test, definitely worth the investment you know, before you go to surgery. It has been shown that on a CT scan, a nodule has to be just under a centimeter, about seven to nine millimeters, so a little smaller than an M&M &M or a P or a Skittle to be detected on x-rays, but only a millimeter, really, really small to be detected on a CT scan. So the sensitivity of a CT scan is much better. And again, you know, talk about it with your surgeon or your oncologist, because I definitely recommend a CT scan before going to surgery. Because again, if the cancer is spread to other nodules in the lungs, we're not gonna recommend taking out that first lung nodule because it's already spread. We're gonna talk about something systemic like chemotherapy. All right, now let's talk about treatment. All right, how do we treat lung tumors in dogs? So the treatment of choice, as I've talked about, I keep kind of giving everything away, is definitely surgery. If you have a solitary single lung nodule that hopefully you've confirmed with a CT scan, the next step is going to be surgery. And this is a thoracotomy, so this is a big deal surgery. Usually this is going to require referral to a boarded surgeon, so you're gonna to wanna to check their website for board certified surgeon. Uh, usually these dogs are in the hospital for night or two with a chest tube in overnight they do well but it, you know they're on pain medications and things like that um, sometimes the surgeon can do it with a scope so thoracoscopy uh, the surgeon I worked with previously did that so it just meant a smaller incision and a quicker recovery typically they're gonna biopsy the lymph nodes at surgery as well it depending on where the lung tumor was but hopefully with that so hopefully if you had a solitary primary lung cancer it's gonna be really important because we're gonna get the type of tumor and the grade of tumor which we'll talk about in the final section which is very prognostic and help us predict the overall outcome whether or not the dog needs chemotherapy after surgery, a lot of that will depend on the biopsy. But in general, we wanna remove the primary lung tumor first and then decide whether they need chemo based on the biopsy, including the type of tumor that it is and the grade of tumor. Some of the other prognostic factors may play a role, like how big the tumor was and things like that. So if they are gonna need chemo, 
often will use drugs like carboplatin, uh, navel bean, which is also called vineral bean, um, and sometimes some non-steroidal anti-inflammatories as well. For the most common types of lung tumors, which tend to be carcinomas, bronchioaveolar carcinomas, there are some less common lung tumors like histiocytic sarcomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and things like that. So again, I can't make specific recommendations about what you know your dog may need, but that's why hopefully after surgery and you get your biopsy back, you can consult directly with an oncologist. Please don't ask me what I would you know specifically recommend because I can't make recommendations over YouTube. These videos are just to give you some general recommendations, some general information, hopefully demystify the process. Remember, I have a whole playlist on chemotherapy. Check out vlog number 93 about chemotherapy side effects, home safety with chemotherapy, what to do if your pet is going through chemotherapy in terms of managing side effects, um, you know, how to get give your pet pills and things like that. So please check out all those videos as well. And finally, what is the prognosis for a dog with a lung tumor? And so overall, when they look at all the dogs with lung tumors, it's actually not bad, it's a year. And I know if you're listening to this, you're like, Dr. Sue, you're crazy. A year is never long enough. When I say a year, we have to remember that the lifespan of dogs is much shorter than people. And so a year is not an insignificant period of time in a dog's life. But when it's your own dog, I get it. I get it. It's never enough time. But it's a respectable amount of time when we're talking about cancer overall. There are some cancers, you know, you know, lymphoma without treatment is only a month. But there's a huge wide range within that, guys, and there's gonna be a lot of variables that will contribute to that. And so uh, some of it is the tumor type. So the main predictive factors are the type of tumor, so that we need the biopsy, the grade, so low grade, intermediate grade, or high grade, and that's a big prognostic factor. We'll talk about how that can change it. Did your dog have clinical signs, coughing, um, you know, weight loss? Some studies also show if they had fluid around the lungs, that can be a negative prognostic factor as well. So some, some of those symptoms that we talked about, which are also called clinical signs. So again, another reason why doing those x-rays to try to catch these tumors before your dog is showing symptoms can be so important. Um, and then the stage, how far advanced it is. And the stage also takes into account the size of the tumor. Again, you know, going back to why finding these tumors when they're smaller can be so important. So a dog with a solitary, small, low-grade tumor can do really well with just surgery and in some studies like 800 days, which is over two years, so they can do really well. In contrast, an intermediate grade tumor or grade two tumor in some studies lives about 250 days, so about eight months. So depend on some of the characteristics on the biopsy, I may recommend chemo. How big was the tumor? Was the dog showing symptoms and things like that? And then the high grade tumors in some studies, you know, about a week or two. So, you know, very, very different. And the hard part is guys, we usually don't have this biopsy information back until after surgery. So again, it can be very challenging because we have to make these decisions before we go to surgery. All right, guys, that was my attempt at quick tip information on lung tumors. Uh, there's gonna, you know, I know I can't answer every question. Uh, there are gonna be some dogs where it may be deemed impossible to remove the primary lung tumor, and you may talk to your oncologist about just doing chemotherapy. There are some t cases where we might use a different chemotherapy than I recommended. So in some of the cases, we're using Palladia, uh, which is an anti-angiogenic therapy it's a drug that was originally labeled for mast cell tumors. So again, talking to an oncologist is going to be a great way to get an individual, individualized plan for your pet. Links below. Again, tell me the videos that you want to see. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Mabel, I'm thinking about you. I hope that you kick this cancer's butt. And again, thanks for watching everyone. I look forward to seeing you at the next video.